Hello, and welcome to this module where we will discuss connectivity to our on-premises networks. The objectives of this module will be to introduce you to the concepts of an IPsec VPN connection, along with Oracle FastConnect. The different connectivity options include public internet, VPN, and FastConnect. With public internet, we'll make use of either reserved or ephemeral public IP addresses. And we'll take into account the internet data out pricing that we talked about in the previous module. In terms of VPN, we'll use IPsec authentication and encryption, where we'll use either the OCI managed VPN service or some sort of software-based VPN that would run on an OCI compute resource. For Fast Connect, this is a private connection, it's separate from the internet. We are able to achieve a consistent network experience can utilize port speeds uh, in aggregates of 1 and 10 gigabits per second, and FastConnect also comes with a service level agreement. Both FastConnect and IPsec VPN take advantage of the dynamic routing gateway that we discussed in the previous module. So if we have our VCN configuration here with our internet gateway, and we we're intending to connect to a customer's on-premises data center, we would simply introduce that dynamic routing gateway and utilize that for connectivity. Again, it's a virtual router that provides a single point of entry for remote network paths coming into your VCN. We would use this to establish a connection with our on-premises network, either using VPN or FastConnect. And after attaching the DRG, just remember that we have to add those routes. So whatever our on-premises network range includes, uh, we would define that as the target in our route table with the DRG as the gateway or the connection. Some DRG considerations here. So before we provision that dynamic routing gateway, we want to make sure to check our service limits uh, to ensure that we have the, ca the capacity to create the DRG. Uh, the dynamic routing gateway must be attached to a VCN. And again, it's a one-to-one -one relationship, one VCN, one DRG. Uh, the DRG can have numerous outbound connections, however. This could include multiple VPN connections, multiple fast connect virtual circuits, or even multiple remote peering connections to other OCI regions. The OCI VPN service allows secure connection to our on-premises networks. It's a free service. Uh, so for customers looking to quickly integrate their on-premises network with OCI, uh, for proofs of concept, a VPN makes a very flexible, very easy to get configure connectivity option to get started quickly. Uh, the bandwidth for VPN is about 250 megabits per second. Uh, of course, this traffic is traversing the public internet. So it's important to keep in mind that results may vary depending upon customer situation, um, internet, things of that nature. Uh, bandwidth, of course, is dependent upon the customer's access to the internet and general internet congestion. OCI uses the Juniper MX series for hardware-based IPsec termination. So when we configure that IPsec connection on the OCI side, behind the scenes, we're configuring this hardware to establish that customer connectivity. We are going to provision redundant VPN tunnels located in physically and logically isolated tunnel endpoints or points of presence. Right now, customers choosing to set up IPsec VPN connections must utilize static routes. Uh, BGP or Border Gateway Protocol is supported for FastConnect, uh, but not currently with VPN. In terms of authentication, the VPN service uses IKEv1 uh, by way of a shared secret. The dynamic routing gateway is the VPN head end at OCI, and the CPE or customer premises equipment refers to the actual router or on-premises device at the customer location. Uh, the CPE essentially equates to a single public IP address. So a customer could have multiple CPEs, each with its own unique IP address, connecting into uh, an IPsec VPN connection on the Oracle side. Now, when it comes time to set up a VPN connection, we're gonna start with our VCN. We're going to create our route table, establish our dynamic routing gateway, enter a route entry in that, in that route table, 
So our on-premises network, in this case, will be 10.0 slash 16. And to get there, we go through the dynamic, dynamic routing gateway. On the customer side, we have the on-premises network, which is that 10.0 slash 16, as we mentioned, along with a router. Now this router IP address, the CPE, is going to be a publicly accessible IP address, a unique public IP address for the VPN connection. So we'll establish that VPN connection, and when we do so, we'll define the static route that the Oracle, the dynamic routing gateway will utilize when evaluating the destination traffic that's going to the on-premises network. For more on IPsec VPN connectivity, come back for the advanced module where we'll dive a lot deeper and go through a couple of demos. Now FastConnect is a private dedicated connection between OCI and a customer's on-premises infrastructure. This means we have a dedicated lease line which allows for predictable, predictable performance and lends itself to enterprise grade resiliency which includes that service level agreement. So for large and growing, uh, sorry, we have a large and growing partner ecosystem uh, so providers like Equinix and Megaport and others that are coming online. There are three different connectivity models when establishing a fast connect circuit. Option one is direct Oracle. So there might be situations where the Oracle edge location, that point of presence where the fast connect termination exists, it lives in a hosted data center. So in some cases, the customer might also be hosting their infrastructure in the same data center. Uh, this allows for a very short cross connect between the customer's infrastructure and the Oracle infrastructure and allows for port speeds in aggregates of 10 gigabits per second. If the customer is not hosting their infrastructure in that co-location, but they are near the co-location, it is possible to establish a dedicated circuit using a third party to connect their on-premises data center to that co-location. From there, it would simply be a matter of cross-connecting uh, from the provider's infrastructure to the Oracle infrastructure to establish that fast connect circuit. And then the third option, this would be utilizing some sort of WAN connection, potentially an MPLS, uh, to utilize the Oracle network provider or exchange partner uh, to establish a VPN, uh, sorry, a direct connect connection into OCI. Now, FastConnect supports both public and private peering. Uh, private peering is where we simply utilize the private IP space to communicate between resources in our on-premises data center and OCI. All private peering traffic will utilize the dynamic routing gateway to connect into our VCN. Now, FastConnect also supports uh, public peering, as illustrated by the blue line there. Uh, public peering allows customers to connect to region-based resources that exist outside of the customer's software-defined network, or VCN. Things like object storage, API endpoints, or even public IP addresses that we reserve and assign to our compute resources. So you'll notice the path here goes, traverses from the, public, the customer's on-premises data center to the Oracle Edge location. From there, it routes directly to the public resource that lives within the region. So there's no need to go through the DRG to get to these resources, but all traffic will still continue, will still traverse that private fast connect circuit without ever going across the public internet. Here is a, a short list of the current fast connect partner ecosystem. So uh, providers like AT&T, Megaport, CenturyLink, and others to come as time goes by. Now, if we do a quick comparison, site-to-site -site VPN versus FastConnect. A few things to keep in mind here. VPN is about 250 megabits per second. And again, it traverses the public internet where we have limited control, so congestion um, and other, other circumstances might uh, impede the overall bandwidth. On the FastConnect side, the customer provisions the port and the circuit. They can choose in increments of one or 10 gigabits per second and there is a service level agreement behind that. So they're gonna get the level of bandwidth they provision as necessary. From a routing perspective, on the VPN side, we're using static routing as discussed. With FastConnect, we leverage the Border Gateway Protocol, or BGP. This is a dynamic routing feature uh, that essentially allows customers to advertise routes out to OCI 
and it allows Oracle to advertise routes about the customer's VCN or customer's networks uh, back to their on-premises network. VPN is encrypted by design, by default, whereas traffic traversing Fast Connect, given that it's a private circuit, is not going to be encrypted. There's no charge for VPN. Uh, on the Fast Connect side, we charge, Oracle charges for the port hours, depending upon whether it's a one gigabit or a 10 gigabit port, and then whatever the customer or whatever the provider charges for the lease line. So if it's a co-location, then the, the hosted data center is gonna, provide, is gonna charge for the cross-connect. Uh, if they're using an AT&T MPLS connection, they'll pay AT&T for that circuit, and they'll pay Oracle for the port. In terms of pricing, um, again, if you're using VPN or any other um, internet gateway type connection, it's the same pricing we talked about in the previous module. All inbound data transfer is free. All outbound data transfer up to the first 10, gigabyte, or 10 terabytes is free. And then it's 0.85 cents per gigabyte beyond the first 10 terabytes. With Fast Connect, customers pay only for the port. There is no data transfer charge for any data going across that Fast Connect circuit. Data coming in from the customer's on-premises location or data traveling out to the customer's on-premises location via that Fast Connect circuit. One flat rate, that's all they pay. Now, if we do a quick pricing comparison, uh, many of our competitors actually charge for their connectivity and they charge a discounted data transfer fee on top of that. So if you were to look at something like AWS, for example, if the customer is transferring large amounts of data, let's say they've got a, a pretty significant data store that they're replicating between their on-premises data center and the cloud. If that puts them in the realm of, let's say, 500 terabytes of data transferred per month, we're looking at a flat port speed. This, this would be uh, about 50 gigabits per second, uh, so 5, 10 gigabit ports. On the AWS side, that cost increases because they're paying that data transfer charge um, in addition to the, the port cost. So in summary, we looked at the various connectivity options, uh, both public internet, site-to-site -site VPN, and Fast Connect. Uh, we noted that OCI provides free managed VPN service and that Fast Connect provides a dedicated private connection between on-premises data centers and OCI with higher bandwidth options and a more reliable, more consistent networking experience.